today's lecture, we will look at classes and objects. We'll specifically cover classes, objects. We'll look at the advantages of object-oriented programming. We'll look at some visibility modifiers, and we'll play with some practicals on classes and objects. We need to understand the concept of classes and objects because they provide for us a way we can organize our codes into generic and reusable pieces. Additionally, the methods and properties in the classes and objects can be made private. In this way, the programmers do not have to know in detail how those methods work in the classes or objects. They simply need to understand the services they render and how those services can be used. For instance, in the array list, we use the dot add to add elements to the array list. But in detail, we are not concerned about how the dot add method works. We only need to understand that when we use a dot add method, it has an item to our array list. Writing our codes using the object oriented approach comes with several advantages. For example, it will enable us to maintain and modify our codes easily with time. It will allow us to create new objects with small differences to the existing ones. It allows the creation of new data types that are not already defined. And it makes the development and maintenance of projects easier as the size of the projects grow. And finally, it enables us to have effective development of large-scale software and graphical user interfaces. When we talk about objects, we are simply referring to basic runtime entities in object-oriented systems. These objects often represent entities that can be distinctively identified. For example, if we are writing a program that will store student details, the student in this case becomes the object. If our program, however, is on a loan, the loan becomes the object. We should understand that objects often have their unique identities, states, and behaviors. The state of an object is basically represented by the data fields in that object with their current values. If we take the case of the rectangle as our object, the states will basically be the length and the breadth. What are their current values? So that is what the state of the rectangle will be. If we consider the case of a student at a university, what do we expect to be the state of the student? One of the states could be the name of the student, the index number, the course, the class, and year of enrollment. The behavior of an object is defined by the methods that are available on that object. For example, if we take our object to be a rectangle, this behavior would be defined by methods such as to get the area of the rectangle, set the length of the rectangle, set the breadth of the rectangle, or any other available method that we can invoke to let the rectangle perform a specific function. Similarly, if we consider a student as an object at the university, we would expect to see methods such as to set the name, set the department, set the course, set the hall of residence as the ones that would define how our object the student behaves. Class is a collection of objects of similar type. We can view it more like a template that is used to define what an object's data fields are and what the methods will be. So once we have created a class, any number of objects can as well be created or instantiated from and we should note that classes often provide special methods which are referred to as constructed, and these are what we use to create new objects from that class. So a Java class file uses variables to define the data fields as the state of the object and methods to define the actions and the behavior of that object. So how do we create a class in Java? We'll use a simple example as a case study to see how it goes. So we are assuming that we want to create a Java program that will compute the site areas as well as the volumes of rectangular boxes that have different parameters. 
If we go by the object-oriented approach, we would create a class of rectangular boxes. And once we've created a class of rectangular boxes, we can now create different objects for instances from this rectangular box class for each distinct rectangular box. Once we have the distinct rectangular boxes, we can now compute their side areas and volumes as well. So we'll go through some codes to see how it goes. To create a rectangular box class from which we'll be creating our distinct rectangular boxes, you can simply create a new Java class file and we give it a name rectangular. In that case, it will create the class file for us without data fields. So if we want to give it data fields, we need to use variables in determining the type of data fields that our rectangular box class will have. So in this case, the length, breadth, and height of our rectangular boxes will be stored as doubles. But because we've not initialized them, they will all have default values of zero. However, this will not enable us to create rectangular boxes from our parent rectangular box class. To enable us to create rectangular boxes, we need to ensure that we have included a constructor. So a constructor is basically what we will be using to create the new rectangular box class. So our constructor here, which we have rectangular with nothing in it, will simply create a rectangular box with default values for length, breadth, and height as zero. So with this, the user would be able to create rectangular boxes, but they would all have default lengths, breadth, and heights of zero. If we want our user to be able to create rectangular boxes with different lengths, breadth, and heights, we can add other constructors to give the user the option to do so. So for example, if we add two more constructors, the first constructor will allow the user when the person is typing the new rectangular, you need to enter a double value and another double value. So it will take two double values and the first double value would be assigned as the length and the second double value will be assigned as the break. So the default values that we have initially will be overwritten by the new values that are being added to the new constructor. The second constructor enables the user to enter three double values. The first double value would be used as the length, the second double value would be used as the break, and the last double value would be used as the height of the newly created rectangular box. So the codes here will simply overwrite the original values for the three variables to the new values that were entered during the new creation of the rectangular box. So we can create methods that will enable the user to change or set the length, breadth, and height of the rectangular boxes that have been created to whatever values the user desires. So for example, this method will be able to allow the user to set the length of the rectangular box that has been created, irrespective of which constructor, whether the user uses the first, second, or third constructor, the user can manually set the length by using the dot set method. So all you need to do is to call the name of the rectangular box you created dot set, and when you enter a new double value, it will override the length the rectangular box that we've created. So these two methods as well will be able to change the breadth and height of our rectangular boxes. We'll play with these in our particles to get more understanding of how they work. Additionally, we can create methods that the user would be able to use to find the area. This could be the area of the site or the area of the base or we create methods that the user would be able to use to find the volume of the rectangular boxes that have been created. So in our practicals, we'll look at methods that we'll be able to create to find the site area as well as the base area. We'll create the methods that we'll be able to use to find the surface area of our rectangular boxes. 
in the object class created, we now need to create objects from this object class to suit our purpose in our Java code. For example, we created an object class for rectangular boxes. How do we now create individual rectangular boxes with different parameters to suit our purpose? To do that, we would use what is referred to as the constructor. The constructor is just a method which is invoked to create the object using the new operator. So at any point in time, we are writing our code and we are using equals to new array list or new hash map. We are simply using the constructor in the array list class or the hash map class to create new array list or hash maps. There are some few things we need to note about the constructor. Each constructor for each class will have the same name as the class itself. There cannot be a case where the constructor's name differs from that of the class of objects it's creating. Constructors also do not have return types if you are creating methods for the constructors and they are invoked using the new operator when we want to create a new object. So let's look back at our post to see where the constructors are. So in our rectangular object class, we see that the name of the class is rectangular. So any method that is rectangular serves as constructor. So here we have a constructor, another constructor, and another constructor for our rectangular object class. With our object class created, where should it be played in our Java codes to enable us to access it and create our unique objects? We can place this object class as a separate file in the same or different Java projects. If it is in a different Java project, then we need to import it before we can use it. Or it can be the same class file as the file with the main Java class. To enable us to use the object data and methods in any given object class, we first of all need to declare the object variable. And after the declaration, we can now use the object variables and methods. So, for example, in our rectangular box class, we can declare a new rectangular box using rectangular new rectangular. So, this becomes the reference name which we will be using to access our new rectangular box. We can decide to use a single statement to declare and create a new object from the object class. We are considering our rectangular box class. We can say rectangular, new rectangular is equals to new rectangular. So this will declare and print the new rectangular box for us. And we can now decide to change or modify its parameters to what we want. To access an object data and its methods after it's been created, we simply use the dot operator for that so in our case where we created an object called new rectangular, if we want to get its length, we simply use the dot operator with the length to get the length of our new rectangular object. If in the case we want to set its length or change its length, we just call the name of the object new rectangular dot set length and we put the number we want to set the length to and this will set the length of our new rectangular object for us. When we were introduced to variables, we learned that variables could be either local, that is when it is declared inside a method and it is not static, or it could be an instance variable when it is inside a class but outside a method and it is not static, or it could be a static variable where this variable is declared as static. So we need to understand what happens when we declare variables as static or we declare constants as static or methods as statics and how we would be able to access them. So the static variables, constants or methods, these are variables that are declared as static and the static variable is shared by all objects in that class. However, a static method cannot access the instance member of the class. We will use these simple codes to try to explain how the static variables, constants, and methods work with regards to 
our instance variables, methods, and um, local variables as well. So in this case, we have um, three integer variables. I and J are declared as instance variables, while K is a static variable. We have our public static void main, and this is a static method. We have a method called print, and print is an instance method. And we have another method called time power, and time power is a static method. So in the static method called main, if we try to access the variable j, j would not work or it will give us an error because j is an instance variable and we cannot access it inside a static method. So for us to be able to access j, we need to make the declaration static or we would not be able to access it. Additionally, if we want to access the method print, print is an instance method and we would not be able to access it in the static method. If we want to be able to access the method print, we need to change the declaration to static method. However, if we try to find or access the time power of 2 or k, which is um, a static variable, it will allow us or there would not be an error because the method find power is declared as static a is a static variable, and 2, let's try to find the power of 2 with k. So this will not give us any error. So that is what we are supposed to know about the behavior of static methods with regards to instance and local methods and variables as well. We also need to understand the concept of visibility modifiers, the types we have in Java, and what happens if we use any of them. So the visibility modifiers are often used to modify how visible a class and its members are to another class or in our Java codes. So if we are coding and we don't specify the visibility modifiers, by default, the classes, methods, and data fields are accessible by any class in the same package. So Java provides for us three types of visibility modifiers. We have the public visibility modifiers. And if we use the public visibility modifiers, that means the class methods and data fields with the public visibility modifier can be accessed from any other class. If we decide to go for the private visibility modifiers, it means the class methods and data fields are only accessible within this class. A protected visibility modifier is a reading assignment to students. We are done with the theory. We'll now go to the particles to see how we can create our own object classes. We'll start with our particles by creating a new package inside which our rectangular box class will be created and where we'll be testing our codes. So we go to our project, go to the source folder, right click, and we select new package. So we pick the package and we give it a name, test class. and we click finish. So inside our test class package, this is where we would now create our Java class files, one to contain our main methods and one to contain our rectangular box class. So for the test class package, we right click again and we create a new Java class file and we call it practical class of capital classes. We select the public static void main and we click finish. So this is where we'll come to test our codes to see if the class we will create for our rectangular boxes will actually work. We will not write anything on it at the moment. We'll simply delete the pre-generated codes and we'll create our rectangular box class. So to create our rectangular box class, we simply go to the same package, the test class, we right click, and we create a new Java class file. So for our new Java class file, we are just going to give it a name, rectangular um, box. 
So this is the name we would give to it. And we are not going to select the main method. We'll simply click finish. And we are done with our rectangular box class creation. The created rectangular box class will not help us in any way to create rectangular boxes if we do not give it some details. So we'll start by giving it the data fields or properties of this rectangular box whenever we create it. And we know that the rectangular box is going to have properties of length, height, and breadth. So we are going to use double variables to take the values for the length, breadth, and height of our rectangular boxes. So we simply just create a double length. We create another double variable height and create another double variable break. So we are done with our properties for the rectangular boxes. So anytime we create a rectangular box, it will come with the properties of length, breadth, and height. So we start with our first method or default method for creating rectangular boxes, which is a constructor. So we learned in our theory that the constructor method should have the same name as the class file. So in this case, our class file is rectangular box. So we simply copy this rectangular box and we paste it for our default method for constructing rectangular boxes. So we add our round braces our curly braces and we are done with the default method. So whenever the user says new rectangular and there is nothing inside the round brackets, to create a rectangular box with default length, breadth and height of zero. Let's create another constructor which will take user desired length, breadth and height during the creation, unlike the default one which takes the default value. So we want a constructor or a method that when the user uses to create the rectangular boxes, the user would enter the length, breadth, and height directly. So as we learned in our theory, the constructor has to have the same name as the class file. So again, we start with the rectangular, rectangular box our round braces and our curly braces. Now there is an error because there are two methods with the same name, with the same properties. So we need to change the properties of the second constructor. So when the user is creating a rectangular box, what value should the user enter for the length, breadth, and height? So we need to use variables to take those values and do an assignment in the Curly braces. So again, our length, breadth, and height are double. So we need to use double values as well. So we say double and so we would use a new name or a different name so we don't get confused with the default length of the rectangular box. And we would also create another double variable to take the so let's also call it new bread and we create another double variable to take the height so we also call it new height so once this is done we now need to do an assignment by saying the height property or the length property of our rectangular box is the same as what the user would enter for the new length. The height will be the same as what the user would enter as the new height and the breadth will be the same as what the user would enter as the new breadth. So inside our curly braces, we simply say length. is equals to new length. And this will assign whatever value that the user would enter first as the length of the rectangular box. And again, we say height. Sorry, the next is breadth. So we say breadth. 
next value is bread. So bread is equal to new bread. And we do assign the second double value to the bread of our rectangular box. And we say the height is equal to new height. And we are done with our second constructor. So we can create another constructor, assuming the user is only interested in the length and breadth of the rectangular box and does not want anything to do with the height. So we can create a constructor of that sort for such kind of a user. So since it's not going to differ from this, we simply copy this one and do a modification. So here we want the user to enter a specific length and breadth only. So inside our round braces, we are only going to delete the height because the user doesn't want to create a rectangular box with the height or the default height in this case will be zero. So we simply delete this one and we have our constructor. We can create as many constructors as we want. However, I would leave the rest of the constructor creation as assignment to students. So the first assignment is to create a constructor where the user is only interested in the height and length of the rectangular boxes. And we create another constructor where the user is only interested in the breadth and height of the rectangular box. For our rectangular objects that we will be creating, the user at one point in time might want to change the length, breadth, or height of the rectangular box at any point in time. So let us create methods that will allow the user to do so at this her desired time. So we have three methods we would create. The first method is to allow the user to change the length of the rectangular box. So in this case, we are not going to return any value for the user to see. We only want to change the length of the rectangular box and that is all. So we are going to use the void create our method so we say void and we call the method set length and what do we want to do with the method set length so in the set length we are going to use the double value as the length of our rectangular box so inside we just type double new length and in our curly braces we simply assign the initially created length as the new length we are now thinking. So inside, we simply say length is equal to the new length that the user would enter in the method set length. So once the user uses the name of the rectangular box dot set length and puts a double value here, it will change the length of the rectangular box to the new value that the user has entered. So since it's not going to differ from the change height and breadth, we are simply going to copy this and paste it for the two methods and would we'll edit it to make it change the height and breadth of our rectangular boxes. So for this one, we we'll change this to set height and inside, instead of new length, we we'll use new height. And we we'll change this from length to height. And change this as well to new height. Similarly, for the set breadth, we we'll would change this one to breadth. And change this as well to new bread. And change this to bread. 
and new grade. So whenever the user calls the name of the rectangular box dot set height dot set breadth or dot set length and specifies a specific double value, it will override the original height, length, or breadth of the rectangular box. Let's look at other methods that we can create, for example, to find the area, either the surface area, the base area, find the volume, or retain the length, breadth, and height of our rectangular box. So I will go through the first three, that is methods that we can use to find the volume, find the base area, or retain the length of the rectangular box. For methods to find the surface area, retain the height or retain the breadth of the rectangular box, they would be assignment to the student. So let's start with the first method to find the volume of the rectangular box. So the volume of the rectangular box, if we are familiar with the formula for volume of rectangular box, is the multiplication of the length, breadth and height, and that will retain a double value. So it means we expect a double value to be retained whenever the user says the find volume. So we need to create a method that will return something to the user as a volume. So in this case, assuming we call our method find volume, we can write it as double because we expect a double as a return. The volume would be a double value. So double find volume. And don't expect it to take any parameters in the curly brackets. What do we want it to return? We want it to return for us the multiplication of the length by the breadth by the height. So this will return for us the volume our rectangular box. So it's just going to take the length, breadth, and height and do the multiplication for us. And we are done with the method to find the volume of our rectangular box. If we want to write a method to find the base area of our rectangular box, we know if we look at the diagram of the rectangular box, that will be the length of the rectangular box times the width of the rectangular box. It has nothing to do with the height. If you are looking at the height, we are either looking at the side areas. So it's not going to differ so much from the volume. So we can simply copy this and do a modification of that. So we copy and we paste. And we are going to do a modification. Instead of find volume, here we are going to find the base area. So base area and the base area is the length of the rectangle multiplied by the breadth not the height so we are deleting the height and this method will find for us the base area of our rectangular box the method we are going to write to get the length of the rectangular box and return it to the user will not differ so much from the method we wrote to find the base area or the method to find the volume of the rectangular box. So we can copy any of them, we paste and we modify to suit our purpose. So in this case, we are writing a method to get the length. So we call it get length. So in get length, all we are looking for is to return for us the length of our rectangular box and we are done. So the students are expected to work on methods that we will be able to use to find the surface area, methods that we will be able to use to retain the height, and a method that we will be able to use to retain the breadth of our rectangular boxes. We can now go to our initial main class file we created to test our methods. 
to see if we can actually create rectangular objects or rectangular boxes of different sizes from our rectangular box class. Before we do that, I want us to go to our package that contains a rectangular box class. We copy it and paste it in the same package. And during the pasting, let's rename it so that the name is different from what is in the same package. So we call it different. So rectangular box different. We click OK. Now we copy the same new one we've pasted and we paste it in a different package. So assuming there's a different package called particles, we paste it in here. So rectangular box different is in a different package. How will we be able to access it in our package that we are testing for the classes and object? So to ensure it works, let's delete the different in the test package. So we delete it and rectangular box different is only in the particles package. How will we be able to access it in the class file, which is a different package? So we'll test us to see what happens. So we open our Java main class file and we begin our codes. So the first thing we would do is to create sets of rectangular boxes using the constructors that we created and they would have different parameters. So we would want to create the first one using the first constructor and that means the rectangular box that we create will come with default length, breadth and height of zero. We'll create another one using the second constructor which the user would enter the desired length, breadth and height. I'll create another one where the user is only interested in the length and breadth of the rectangular object. So let us see how that happens. So we want to create a rectangular box using the first constructor, the default constructor. So what do we do? We start with the name of the class, so rectangular. So rectangular box. What name do we want to give to our box? Let's call it box one. Is equals to new rectangular box. So this will by default create a rectangular box called box one. And box one will have the default parameters, the length of zero, height of zero, and breadth of zero. So we can likewise use the second constructor, rectangular box, where the user enters the length, breadth, and height and create a different rectangular box. So in this case, we are going to call it box two. We say rectangular box two is equals to new rectangular box. And for the parameters, we want a length of 2.5. We want a breadth of 5.3 and we want a height of 6.1. So this will create a rectangular box called box 2 with this constructor and it will take the first double value as the length, the second as the breadth and the third as the height. So that is one of the ways. Now we want to create a rectangular box using the last constructor where the user is going to enter only the length and the breadth of the rectangular box. So we can simply copy this and modify it to copy this paste, and we want to call it box 3 and inside we want a length of 5, we want a breadth Four, and that is it. So this will create a rectangular box called box three using the third constructor. It will take the first value as the length and the second value as the breadth. 
So we can use any of the boxes to see if the methods we created in the rectangular box are actually visible in our main class. So let's assume we are using box one to test that. When we use the box, mention the name of the rectangular box dot, we see that we would be able to get the breadth, the height, and the length of box one. We can find the base area. These are methods we wrote. We can find the volume. We can get the length of box one. We can get the set the breadth, height, and length of box one as well. So we are going to test some of the methods that we've created to see if they are actually working. So for example, we'll start with box one to bring the volume of it and the base area. Then we'll do that for the two boxes to see what happens. So we start with system out a print line and we are trying to find the area, sorry, the volume of box one. So we see box one dot, and we want to find the volume of box one. So we find the volume. We do the same for the two boxes, box two and three, and here we want to find the volume of box 2 and volume of box 3. So we bring this to 2, we bring this to 1, sorry, 3. When we run it, it is printing for us. The volume of box 1 is 0, box 2 is um, 80.82 and box 3 to is 0. And that is because box 1 was created using the default constructor and the default constructor has length of 0, x0, break 0. So when we do the multiplication, we get 0. Box 2 was created with a length of 2.5, break 5.3 and height of 6.1 so the multiplication will give us 80.82 and box 3 we only created it with length and breadth so the height of box 3 is 0 and that is the reason why we have 0 as the volume so we can set the height of box 3 to something other than 0 and see if the volume will change so we start with the name of the box box 3 but we want to set the height, so set height and we divide as the height of box 3. If we run it now, we expect the volume of box 3 to change. It becomes 100 now because we are doing a multiplication of 5 by 5 and 4. So that gives us 100. Similarly, we can set the length, breadth and height of box 1 see if the values will change. So box one dot set breadth let's put um, 20 and box one dot set we set the height to 3.4 and box one again set the length to 2. So in this case, though it was originally created with the default values of 0, we have changed those values and if we run it, we expect the volume to change as well. So now that they've been changed, we are seeing the corresponding change in the volume as well. So we can print out other values of our boxes we've created. So for example, if we want to print the length of box 3, we copy this. So we want to print just the length of box 3. And we would 
in this part the box three dots and we can get the length of box three. So if we run it, will it give us the actual length of box three? Box three is supposed to have a length of five. Let us run it and see. That is what it will bring. So length of box three, we can see is giving us five. We can as well find the side area of box three for any of the boxes now we print. And let us say we are printing for box two. Dot. We want to find the base area and we run it. So we change this to base area of box two. When we run it, we should see the base area of box two. So the base area of box 2 is supposed to be the length times the breadth. That is how come we have 18.25. So what happens if our object class is in a different package from our main Java class file? So initially we copied rectangular box and we renamed it into a different package. So how do we use the rectangular box diff to create rectangular boxes in our main Java class that is also in a different package? So it's not so different, we'll start and see what we need to change. So we begin with the name. The name is rectangular box different, so rectangular. So when we see it, we see that there are two rectangular boxes, one dif different. So different is in a different uh, package called practicals. We select that and we give a name to our box. Let's call it box four. It's equals to new rectangular box different. And we create it using the default constructor. Now we can see there is an error, it's underlined, and it's saying we should change the visibility of rectangular box different to public. When we go to the constructor, we see that it was not originally public. So when we click on it to make it public, we would have the error disappearing. Now we can access box 4 as a rectangular box created from a rectangular box class which is in a different package. So what it means is if you want to access the methods that we have created here, we need to put public on all of them before we would be able to access them. So for example, let us let's just create the public for two methods. We'll change it for the set length and we'll change it for find this area. So these are the only public methods we have created. We've left the rest as they are to see if we would be able to access them. When we save it and we try to access some of the methods from box 4, let us see what happens. So we start with the name of the box, box 4, dot, and we see we can only be able to find the base area, we can only be able to set the length, because these are the only methods that are public, which will be accessible. However, we should note that because we are using rectangular box different, which is in a package, not the same as the main class file, it has automatically imported it. So we can see the package name and the name of the class path imported. So if we want to use all the methods in the rectangular box different, which is in the particles package, we have to come and set all the methods here to public before they would work. So let us see, change this to public and we save. We go to the 
main class again, we would now be able to find the base area, set breadth, height, length, and that is it. So if we are working with a class file which is in a different package, we need to import. And we may have to modify, use the visibility modifier to ensure that the methods are visible in our main class. We are done with the practicals for objects and classes. It's assignment time and students are expected to do the following. So the students are supposed to create a class for students or a class from which students with various properties can be created. And this class of students is supposed to have the following data fields, name as a string, index number, the department of the student, hall of residence of the student, year of death, the CWA or GPA of the student. After this, the student is supposed to create at least two constructors that can be used to create student objects from the student class. And the student is expected to create methods that can be used to retain each individual property of a student. So if I want to find the name of the student that I've created, I should be able to use that method and to retain the name, index number, department, all the way down to the CWA of the student. And the student is also supposed to create a method that will compute and retain the age of the student based on the student's year of birth. So you take the year of birth, get the current year, do the subtraction, and retain the age of the student. 